Man, uh, thank you for your all your patience and uh, continued. Uh, you keep listening to the program continuously, and uh, it, it it has been like four hours thirteen minutes from the start. So it's four hours. So that's really great that uh, the progress the, the the summit is progressing very nicely. Now I would like to invite uh, our special guest uh, to give a lecture on something which is very unusual okay uh, we talk about uh, is uh, bharatdev yeah Bharat yeah, yeah. yeah so thank you bharat uh, 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 of your business yeah abdul ji yeah uh, quick thing so uh, i would be presenting along with my co-author ram kishor he is also on the call sure this sure one. definitely Thanks. definitely you, you can uh, deep uh, you can make presenters for both if you are able to hear me hmm? they are already the presenters we can proceed okay so uh, today we are talking something very special i really like the book uh, you gave me bharat okay so so thank you for that so we are talking about future proofing your business with figure it out okay by bharat and uh, uh sorry ram ram, ram. okay bharat and ram thank you. you you guys are five i know i know your team <laughs> okay so i'll just introduce bharat uh, ram i don't have your uh, your details but okay you can introduce yourself uh, so bharat kumar is a serial entrepreneur over 19 years in the technology industry he has led the delivery of 1000 plus projects and 100 plus customers across 28 countries Wow. So his experience includes techno innovation, uh, leadership, business modeling, and br uh, bridging business and technology, most notably through the innovation of zero code for enterprise digital transformation. I know zero code is one of the uh, robust platform uh, for no code uh, development. Okay, I have seen the platform and it's really amazing. Okay, I, I would have seen this three, four years back uh, and uh, very interesting uh, gentleman. Uh, Bharat and Ram. So you can introduce yourself and you have time. So, uh, and this is completely a different uh, presentation altogether. Uh, this is for supply chain managers and also it's business managers and everybody. Uh, I, I'm sure uh, you can, we, can, uh, we can enjoy uh, truly uh, of your, uh, your topic. Yeah, over to you. So I think Bharat uh, has left and he might, he might join uh, Ram. So you, you can continue. Yeah, yeah so I'm Ram. Uh, I'm basically coming from background of uh, business strategy consulting. I largely work on uh, uh, business modeling and uh, new opportunity uh, creations is what my core area is. And uh, a little bit of uh, literature has always been uh, part of my career. And uh, uh, this uh, this initiative figure it out uh, uh, as a strategy playbook for entrepreneurs we uh, we uh, we incidentally landed on it but uh, uh, it turned out to be a, a very huge successful one and uh, by the way i just want to show to the audience yeah. so this is yeah. one of the very high quality book i i think it's the most uh, highest quality book in all my bookshelf okay so this is something I'm very proud. I'm just keeping here. I have to. I have some more places to read, but I will enjoy this for sure. Yeah, please. Yeah, so uh, uh, fundamentally, uh, hi everybody uh, on this Saturday afternoon. Taking your time to be part of this particular uh, global supply chain excellence summit day two. Uh, welcome. Uh, we we are quite uh, interested to be part of this particular uh, summit. And present, uh, rather than present, we would like to showcase what exactly this book is all about and uh, how exactly, uh, uh, as I said, uh, we incidentally landed on uh, writing a book. So we by and large come with an uh, multiple industry, multiple initiatives uh, across in our careers of almost uh, near two decades of our entrepreneurial journey. Uh, so at one point of time, we have this question that uh, uh, what exactly we are, how exactly we can showcase ourselves. So in the process, we have many thoughts and uh, 
we ultimately thought of uh, writing a book on the way in which that uh, we have experienced our entrepreneurial journey and also try to bring and present ourselves uh, uh, the key learnings that we actually thought they can work for us in the next five years. So that's what where we came in to uh, design this book called Figure It Out. Uh, this book is actually a futuristic book. This book comes with a expiry date by 2028, 29. Uh, it's, this is this book has an uh, uh, holds uh, uh, holds a strong 40 in uh, uh, designing, helping out as a playbook as a reference guide to number of strategies that you would like to dynamically uh, draft yourself yourself uh, in your business across across context so this book this book as as i say is not on uh, as of now is not on retailly available this now is being uh, sponsored by zero code as of now and anyone who would like to uh, uh, have this book can actually uh, uh, can actually find a new way of uh, gifting to your clients or to your uh, employees to your teams asking them to think uh, uh, think much better uh, think and contribute to the company's growth is what one of the basic core idea that we bought in so what we did in this book is all about we designed around 50 different themes uh, that we have been experiencing and the newer formats of these experiences in the next coming five years uh, we put each of the topic into four pages. Uh, these are some of the titles, Watermelon Theory, Ideary, Novism, The Pit Stop, Exitpreneur, Knowledge is a New Cholesterol. Uh, so there are, there, there are around 50 topics here in this, in this book. Each book is highly interactively designed. So each, each topic is presented in a just of four pages with uh, largely with images brief precise content very crispy content with catchy power power content and it is given with national and international or regional business instances that are actually uh, can be can be considered like case studies and we also we also gave an interactivity through a qr code that uh, the reader finds this interesting uh, they can actually scan and reach to the uh, uh, website where they can actually refer more number of information or grab more number of uh, books associated with the same kind of a topic or if they are quite uh, uh, quite pressing need with this particular kind of a topic in their real life business activity they can actually have an appointment with us and we can actually help with uh, uh, with some of our vendors that we have actually onboarded who can actually partner some of the expertise they have across these topics so this is a brief brief introduction on about the figure it out myself i am sriram kishor and uh, the other five authors uh, is bharat is here present today uh, the uh, other three are very uh, interesting personals uh, uh, prashant vignesh arun kumar and vijay kumar so we are all the five authors we came together in making this book happen and it took almost four years for us to come out with this particular kind of a book and now this book is serving as a visiting card for us it showcases what exact way in which we are actually trying to see maneuver the way in which the entrepreneurship is actually taking up and how we actually can actually collaborate and be part of in exchanging across the entrepreneurial communities i welcome bharat to take on a couple of topics i think we'll both will share uh, some of them and i i welcome bharat bharat is currently uh, the ceo of uh, zero code innovations uh, the, which is one of the uh, uh, one of the pioneering low code no code uh, platform companies bharat thank you ram thanks uh, thank you everyone um Hope you can hear me. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Great, great. Okay. Um, thanks, Ram. Thanks, uh, Abdulji, for uh, uh, giving us an opportunity to present uh, this whole idea to a newer audience, um, even though it is somewhere unrelated to supply chain and technology related topics. Uh, but as you mentioned, it would be a little refreshing, is what we thought of. Uh, 
Um, so I'll, I'll also take a bit to add a few more points about the book and then we get into a few concepts. So the, uh, the, the, very, the very first idea about the book is uh, uh, as the reading habit itself has, has died down. So we wanted to write a book and we wanted to write on, on a very boring topic called strategy, strategy. And it was very difficult for us to figure out how you can do something like that. And it, uh, um, so it pushed our boundaries to really figure out what's the best way to present the whole content, what should be those topics. It almost took us about four and a half years to write the book. Literally, we put together about a year of effort just to design the book uh, alone. Okay. Uh, there were so many iterations that has happened. Um, it majorly covers topics around marketing, topics around innovation, technology, and strategy. These were some of the elements that most of us would require, whether you are a startup or a mid-sized company or an MSME or a large enterprise. Uh, each of you can take a leaf out of it and then try to uh, get a, a different uh, ways of solving your problems. That was our intent uh, of why we put together this book. So today we would be presenting about five concepts from the book. Okay. Uh, the very first concept uh, in the book is also exit for now. Um, the, why we started with exit for now is now everybody is talking about entrepreneurship. Uh, we probably, we uh, Abdulji have started a, uh, much earlier. We have started 20 years back. So we know what to start, uh, but we don't know why we are starting this and we don't know the end, end goal and end game most of the times. Um, the biggest problem for entrepreneurs today is they don't have an exit plan. They just look at uh, some newspaper articles or an articles on the internet saying that, okay, somebody raised a billion dollar, somebody made a uh, uh, hundred employees have become a million uh, dollar employee, million uh, <clears throat> uh, worth million dollars as such. But this information is only pieces of information that is not going to help you what you can do with your organization. The most important element for most of the organizations, what we felt was figuring out what is your exit strategy. Exit strategy might not actually mean that you get out of your company, might actually mean you move to a new role, might actually mean uh, switch a career, might mean breaking a relationship. Uh, it can be for anything. It can be for anything. If you precisely know when to exit, it gives you a much bigger ability for you to understand things, uh, execute things in a specific time. And this is probably the, the one of the most important advice that we have been giving to uh, some of the entrepreneurs when they ask, at least the, uh, the, the startup in the startup world, what we have been telling them is fix a time to exit and fix a time, fix what resources you can spend and you will still feel, okay, it's a good experience for me. Is it an year? Is it a two years? Can you spend 10 lakhs, 50 lakhs or a five crores? You decide on it. And then you start building the company. This is, this, this is a very qualitative, uh, a quantitative metric, which would help you to figure out whether you have reached your goal. Uh, even if you have not reached your goal, that's absolutely fine. But at least you know that you are heading towards that path and everything that you uh, plan towards is towards that. Okay. Um, so there are multiple ways of exiting. There are multiple ways of growing businesses. Uh, we can, uh, we, we can look at what is the, uh, whether you are a startup, which is that trying to rapidly grow or a serial entrepreneur, or, uh, you're looking at, uh, strategic, uh, investments that you want to make as you, as, as you grow as a business. Okay. So there are multiple places where you can apply this idea of being an exit for now rather than an entrepreneur. Okay. If you really know precisely as to where to exit, that makes your winning lot more easy is what we felt okay. is what we have been seeing all around as well. Okay. Um, so we put together a few use cases as well. So if you look at it, 
uh, flipkart has made a right move even though they built a brand for a global uh, a global brand but they made a right decision of uh, exiting uh, with walmart uh, same as the case with uh, uh, whatsapp uh, as you all know um, uh, whatsapp has been acquired by facebook um, uh, similar uh, is the instagram as such now it is most of the times it is not just about the valuation whether you are getting a right to valuation or not okay um it's it's also about what you can do in future how much time you have uh, is this the only thing that you wish to do uh, when when we go and meet some old uh, um, some of the senior uh, folks in our industry for them it was like that was the only thing that they were supposed to do and that was the only thing that they did and for them this is a retirement plan building a company is kind of a retirement plan for a lot of them earlier now you have much more opportunities you have a lot more capability to deliver things and there are better ways of uh, um, creating employment creating economies of scale as such so you decide uh, whether it is the value or whether it is your Uh, future opportunities that will give you a, bet, uh, a right way of uh, exiting from this idea and moving on to the next idea but at no point we are trying to teach people about failing fast we are not talking about failing fast here we are talking about you trying to set yourself based on your pace based on your calculations what should be your end goal probably in 2 years or 3 years or 5 years down the line be it be for individuals or for the companies now i'll switch over to um ram for the next uh, topic ram go ahead yeah it's a, uh, it's a interesting way that you have put and uh, i think to uh, uh, my next topic is on uh, a million dollar answer uh, where it fundamentally means about uh, when is the time and what is the time and how exactly you are supposed to keep changing the way in which your business model is being designed so a business model that is designed is not forever and as you as you as you keep uh, seeing the shift in the patterns in the choices in the preferences across markets across customer community uh, the, the business models are also supposed to be changing but by and large a business model over a period becomes little religious little rigid and you start seeing uh, Uh, and you start seeing a very diminishing results out of that very same uh, 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 business model that has actually given you a fortune. So entrepreneurs find it difficult, uh, uh, especially uh, especially they come from uh, uh, a, a different perspective to look at, uh, hoping what worked in the past will also continues to work in the uh, in the present and also future. Uh, uh, it sounds, it appears to be, it assumes to be a little bit uh, hopeful. but as you see you find it very difficult to proceed with it so that's what where the particular idea of uh, timing the business model shift is quite important and critical for any entrepreneur or for any enterprise so that's where this concept comes in and it it exactly trying to uh, uh, probably where exactly to use it uh, uh, probably the technological changes as i said uh, uh, or you find the way in which the landscape of the science and uh, the science and social of retail and e-commerce changing and the value care that you see that an enterprise need to offer to its customers is actually changing and that's where you need to find a shift in the business model you are uh, uh, bef- before I, i i hint some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, business instances uh, i think quite interesting one i always find is that uh, there was this blockbuster uh, dvd rental uh, company uh, which was a, which was a very huge uh, large and successful in us uh, suddenly uh, uh, suddenly a small startup named netflix went to them asked them that they are there to buy most of the labels and uh, as them the way in which the internet is going forward they asked them they offered them to buy the or or, or ask them to change their business model which blockbuster denied and over a period now you see netflix is not just a streaming company or a streaming platform it is now a hollywood studio it's a producer 
it's 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 creating a, a giant differences that it actually brings in uh, uh, into the very entertainment and movie industry so uh, it's, that's that's where blockbuster is is a classical case where we i always find it uh, and and very recently uh, i would like to talk about zomato uh, zomato which which came with an uh, interesting business model as it one of its space of in its business model was uh, 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 zomato lessons was a service which they found it very interesting uh, delivering across 10 different uh, uh, locations where you can order uh, some special items across lucknow chennai mumbai bangalore so uh, they found it quite difficult to, to see the way in which the order prerequisites comes in and uh, after a period of around three years they decided to get rid of this particular business model and the shift in which that happened actually gained a lot for zomato because on the other side they bought in paytm's uh, ticketing and entertainment platform uh, for for some huge million dollar business so i think uh, the shift in which they bought is so timingly well so that uh, zomato is still continuing to be prosperous yeah bro. thanks ram let me just uh, get to the next one uh so by by all means this is uh, next to exit prana this is the most uh, uh, engaging topic for a lot of our audience uh, in the book um, what we call as banana thinking okay uh, see if you if most of you see it banana from the top okay but if you look at a monkey it eats banana from the reverse direction uh, the idea is simple which monkey knows and which we at least most of us at least i don't know is uh, we eat banana because of potassium and the potassium almost 15 to 20 percent of potassium lies at the bottom of the fruit not at the top and most of the times we don't eat the bottom which means the, the very purpose of eating banana gets lost if we don't eat the 10 or 15 percent huh. um, the idea that we took from this is uh, when you get stuck with a problem you don't solve it you reverse it huh. uh, that's some people call it as out of box thinking some people call it with different names um, we uh, came up with a word called banana thinking. Uh, how do you do this is whenever you go on present, this can be applied in a lot of places. This can be including our uh, uh, very own company called Zero Code also got created because of uh, such a banana thinking. Uh, uh, we were always interested in uh, how do we optimize the um, performance uh, of a developer because we've been a technology company we were always looking at ways and means of optimizing developer performance and finally what we ended up doing is with zero code we decided to remove them which made a lot more sense than optimizing uh, a developer okay. the intent is not to replace them with the job the intent is to give them a new tool so that they become a lot more productive irrespective of what really happens with them or not so how do you apply a concept like this is, uh, let's say you want to be productive in a day. I'm just giving you an example. You just want, you need, you want to be productive in a day. What you do is you list things where you spend most of your time by avoiding to do those things itself means you are productive. So that's what reverse thinking is. Um, you, you can use it to present a concept, let's say before, even before you go to go and present a new concept to your management team. Um, you can pick this thing and then uh, well, you can use chat GPT or you can use your colleagues to comment upon it. They'll give you, as Indians, we are very good at uh, um, complaining. So we are very good at complaining. So you can collect all the complaints that you can hear and see how you can solve each of those questions. If you collect 10 complaints, before presenting something to any of your customers, it can be your customers, it can be your management teams, solving those 10 complaints will itself will make your case much stronger. Okay. Uh, you can use this. There, there are a lot of companies which did, which, uh, did this as well, uh, starting from um, SpaceX with uh, reusable uh, launch rockets, uh, Dyson, which is a vacuum cleaner. They've, they've, uh, 
they put together a new way of uh, cleaning, uh, doing vacuum cleaning without a vacuum bag, which would reduce cost over a period of time. An Apple iPhone, which significantly um, came out with an option of no buttons based phone. There was only one button. At that time, there used to be a lot of buttons for every phone, but they said, okay, we would rather use touch, touch screens and have only one button. That gave an altogether a different experience uh, as such. And fundamentally, if uh, uh, you can apply this um, in places where you're doing uh, sales, uh, business strategy, your process optimization, uh, product development, uh, any place where you see that you're going to, uh, where people think you're going to fail, let them be allowed and you solve those problems, you will succeed. That's, uh, that's for me is banana thinking. Uh, or to you, uh, just um, let me just switch to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So by and large, uh, co-optation is, is all grounded within the attitude, within the culture of our team. We largely, from the day we have set up our company, began our entrepreneurial journey, we have never actually competed across any of the things. Either we have worked our way in working with the leaders in the industry, or we have went across on our own trying to do every possible turning every possible opportunity that we have on ourselves so in the process we came across it was one of our research that we have been long doing and calling ourselves that uh, uh, we are we aren't competitor to anybody but we are always a co-operator to a, anyone with the equal energy and strength so that's where this concept of co-optation comes the actual formulation of this concept which got popularized in uh, mid 80s uh, especially with the uh, uh, japan electronic and electrical companies so that's how they actually came up with this particular company uh, with this concept called cooperation where two competitors come together uh, and try to create a, a synergy between them for a focused area or focused outcome and this how this this concept of cooperation refers to a lot of interesting insights into it where exactly that uh, we we always see this to be used uh, especially in identifying common goals that's that's a, a, a very common thing uh, for most of the competitors who consider themselves uh, equally ethical equally strong equally financially well but still they are holding uh, uh, looking out for an edge across each of themselves they say okay let's say let's join together here one particular sphere and work accordingly to it so this is this is where uh, co-optation happens and uh, by and large uh, uh, it's, it's I, I, I we usually call it uh, uh, high potential market areas that's what where they actually come and work and uh, uh, for me to give a lot of examples uh, i would like to instantly uh, look something which is very recently happened this week itself uh, 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 it was between uh, 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 Tanishq and uh, D Beers, which are both uh, competitors in the diamond segment. They decided to come together for a period of three years to establish equal market, uh, equal market opportunity exchange uh, uh, opportunities across, and then see how they actually can engage themselves in either continuing this or. Or, or on on accomplishing a specific list of goals they have set for themselves so it is it is not that easy asking a competitor to be part of uh, something and started working to it because uh, uh, competitor always demands uh, 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 a special respect or a special valuation uh, uh, which actually uh, part of a perspective ideology uh, and I think that's what where there's a huge opportunity for any of the companies here uh, can maybe the very thought of how you can actually go forward uh, and ask your competitor that how we can actually work together itself can carve a very difference in the way in which you can work for your organization in the next couple of years. And this is an age of age of collaboration. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, I, and I, I know that there are a lot of other previous examples of instances of this. But this I would like to bring in because it was just happened in the very this week itself, and this is quite interesting one. And that's where I I I, I say we are a co-operating company rather than uh, 
uh, uh, competing companies. So I think uh, as a small company, as a growing company, uh, uh, being on a cooperating side, uh, it's it brings a lot of huge advantages in both in terms of uh, uh, resources, in terms of uh, their reach, uh, their propositions that makes this company much better. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Ram. Um, so, as as Ram was mentioning, uh, a lot of these ideas that we presented in the book are uh, very much a cultural part of our organization. That's how we were thinking. That's how we were working, and it was kind of a little odd for uh, some of our team members and most of our competitors as such. So we we always went back to them with proposals saying that okay, why don't we work together to explore a new geography why don't we build together a new technology because we are small we can do something much better in a much more quicker fashion um, saying that this is the last con concept that we want to present today uh, we, we always believed uh, as uh, um, abdulji mentioned uh, we, as a company, we've delivered more than 1,000 plus consulting projects around the globe. Uh, we always believed in delivering a right to utility and a right to value. We were never bothered about whether it is uh, uh, the latest technology or the most uh, uh, superior technology. We were always looking at what needs to be done to solve that challenge and create that solution for that customer. Uh, instead of using a, a high performing Java application, if I can write a small DOS program and then use a print for a supermarket, I would rather do that because that serves the purpose. And it is not just my experience alone. Um, we, we've seen large companies doing that. Uh, um, companies like Mercedes who manage systems for which there are no developers at all but they still run because that is serving their utility so we always looked at not the most fanciest or the most newest technology but we always looked at what immediate value that it can bring together so most of you might be aware of this whole idea called hype cycles where whenever there's a new technology that comes in we uh, th there is a path that goes up and then it gets adopted if it there's a lot of investment that goes into it and there's a lesser use cases and if it doesn't get adopted it goes down and then it comes back again with some more utility uh, use cases as such and right now what we are seeing with ai is a classical example now we are looking we are in the fourth generation from 1960s to what we are today uh, it doesn't happen with all the technologies, uh, but but significantly most of the technologies. And we have built technologies where we felt it is so fancy to build a product and it is so fanciful to build a futuristic product. And customers hasn't accepted it because they they haven't found any big utility of that. Okay. Uh, last year, there was a whole, uh, last few years, there was a whole um, discussion about uh, web 3 and there was discussion about 3d printing that we're going to have everything in house and we're all going to have web 3 at least at this point in time it hasn't uh, taken that shape yet okay. so uh, this again when uh, this has been our philosophy uh, that pick technologies which deliver higher utility value to customers or to that specific problem then trying to build because there's a technology available. Today, if you if you really see, um, just to be very clear on numbers, um, there's only 5.1% of companies across the US listed uh, companies who are using AI. It came down from 54 to 5.1%. Okay. And India is probably, a, from the chat GPT standpoint, India has been, uh, contributing a lot to chat gpt because we found an utility most of the developers found some utility around it and we were able to use it so if you can find a right utility please implement technology otherwise don't pick up technologies because it is there because it is fancy 
to talk about something very, very new. Thank you. So that's it from our side uh, for today. And uh, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be happy to answer your questions, and take the discussion forward. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so you, we have still some time, uh, uh, Bharat. Uh, see, those three, four points what you shared is very interesting. This especially, uh, I really liked uh, the first principle, the exit uh, thing. So that is really, uh, when as an entrepreneur myself, you know, when I hear that, so that is something I never thought about. Okay. So that is <laughs> eye opener for me. The moment I had a discussion with you and you told me about that and I see the book. So that is really, I liked it. So that is something uh, makes the, uh, the individual business and man and woman to think in a, completely in a different way. That is something. And you also talk about uh, the cooperation. I think uh, that is the way forward now. Okay, that is a way forward. Organizations are going towards that. Uh, so organizations now uh, started to move towards uh, uh, cooperation, uh, even without without uh, uh, calling it as a specific name or so. Yeah. People are going forward because, you know, even in the strategy consulting, now, uh, Samir, you are there in the call, in the, in the chat. Okay, so we call something as a micro consulting. So the, the gone, are, gone are the days where you go for a complete uh, strategy management uh, consulting and uh, bring a PwC or KPMG guys to do all those uh, uh, stuff. Now people are looking for easier way to do the consulting, uh, in more inclusive uh, of the and at, at the same time best of the best consultants only for the shorter assignments. So things are going forward in that way. Okay, so. Uh, so any any final thoughts? Uh, you have, we have some time still. So any final thoughts? If you can share, then we can bring our next speaker maybe after five ten minutes. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, Ram, you want to add first? Yeah. So probably uh, probably with uh, technology and utility, I think uh, uh, with the technology we are all supposed to make a fortune, but not consider it as a fancy thing of our discovery of our uh, thoughts that's what where uh, uh, we we learned and uh, 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 resulted in zero code uh, where it was initially a lot of uh, uh, a lot of technological uh, fancy things that are built or talked around uh, technology uh, but that's what where we decided uh, uh, and and when we converted this particular fancy of things into a fortune of things i think uh, uh, we found ourselves very interesting space uh, and zero code is actually leading the very true innovation space uh, and and that's that's one i see and uh, coming with the book uh, uh, the very idea of the book is to uh, see how we can actually uh, uh, actually help each other in the way in which we can actually work across and especially sharing through a book and uh, believe since we always an entrepreneur always believes in the future. So thinking of the way in which the things are turning, I think uh, uh, the future is actually set a clear, uh, 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 a clear ambience, uh, uh, how an entrepreneur can drive himself through this context. And uh, strategically, as you are mentioning, uh, uh, the space of strategy consulting has actually, uh, uh, is been uh, fragmented into multiple things. and. Uh, this book can be one such playbook. This book can be one guiding base on your table with your team, uh, which can actually throw a lot of thoughts uh, uh, in, in in carving a better strategy out of the con context that you are in. So that's that's what one we see at it. Fantastic. Yeah. Any more questions, Samir? Would you like to have any questions? We can unmute you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sheikh Sam. I actually uh, typed my question. Uh, my qu uh, thank you very much for uh, Mr. Bharat and uh, Mr. Ram. Uh, my question is about the customer value proposition uh, in context of today's business models, and how do we, how do you guys foresee uh, the need for the value proposition to be continuously? evolving or how how much importance do the 
let's say the uh, entrepreneurs or the exit runners, as you mentioned, uh, should focus on uh, relooking at it because they're all always almost operational and they're trying to generate revenue. They're trying to maintain their profitabilities. So how do you uh, see the importance of this? Thank you. I'll, I'll take this uh, question. Some, uh, for some reason, my video is stuck. Sorry for that. Um, so the, the value proposition that you offer to customer is the magic formula for your business. Okay. And I, I'm not going to give you an answer. Probably I'll, uh, uh, I'll give you possible alternatives. Okay. Uh, if you know business model canvas, the one page that you can fill value proposition is the most important thing that you can offer to customers. Uh, but filling that value proposition is very, very difficult. Uh, identifying that is difficult because more or less, if you look at it today, what Zomato offers, what Swiggy offers, is almost the same. There is no other player in the market because they've all gone out of business, but they, they've all been doing the same. They've all been delivering food. What is great about it? Okay. Um, in the commerce, in, in certain kinds of businesses, there are uh, winner takes it all. There are in certain kinds of businesses, there is a possibility for a large number of players to play around. But leaving this aside, we've also been searching for what can be the true answer for value proposition. A new value proposition cannot constantly evolve. It can evolve, but it cannot change. Because if it keeps changing, then entire model changes. And you cannot fit your model uh, to for every possibility. Is there an answer for that question? Probably yes. Uh, what uh, we have been doing research is uh, we've been working on uh, a model called as outcome-driven innovation. So the the whole idea of outcome-driven innovation is uh, why people buy something. What is that people are looking at? What kind of jobs that they are trying to get? out of certain activity of buying something. If I just take an example, uh, and these problems are like constant across ages, across decades. Okay. If you can identify and relate your product to those problems, which are constant, then your value proposition is very fit. Just to give you an example, uh, we always wanted a cool breeze. So at some, uh, probably our grandfathers use that uh, hand fans. Maybe we've used ceiling fans when we were kids. Now we're using ACs tomorrow. We might, we're, talk, we're already seeing Dyson's bladeless fans. Okay. So the technology has evolved, but the problem that they were solving was always constant. Okay, they were, they were trying to offer something. If, if I'm to, uh, the, the whole point of transportation was to help you go from one place to another place. It might be faster, it might be cheaper, it might be convenient, all of that added. But the actual problem that they were solving was making sure that they help you move from one place to another place. From, from uh, an example, from a theory standpoint, it looks a lot more easier, but to identify that value proposition to your company, you have to, one of the, one of the biggest things that we've been missing out and which was, the, my last statement that I wanted to add uh, to this conversation was also um, most of the Indian companies for us, it is only technology. I was, I was just uh, looking around for a piece of information. The, the five big companies, Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, Meta, as of August, uh, they value about 8.78 trillion, 8.7, they're, they're close to about $9 trillion. And the value of uh, uh, big Indian four IT companies is uh, probably close to about 500 billion. I'm not very clear on that number. Uh, it it will be it is it would be less than 30 percent of what the value of US companies. And still, we recruit more people. We do a lot of work, but what we don't do what Microsoft is able to do better or Meta is able to do better is they've identified problems which can bring business. But for us, everybody's else business problem is our business. 
So if you go and build applications for somebody else, you go and build technology for somebody else, you are only solving their problems. You are not solving your problems. If you keep this in your mind, you'll figure out what is the problem that you should be solving so that you can grow. Not, your customer will also eventually grow, but the important point why you're running business is for you to grow. I'll, I'll end this year and probably if Ram has anything to add, please. Yeah, so by and large, uh, by and large, the same. Uh, these are all rooted in the way in which, uh, uh, in our education system or uh, in our knowledge system, especially in entrepreneurial communities, uh, that we are here to solve uh, uh, a customer problem rather than converting a customer problem into our business. And value proposition only happens is uh, when we start believing what next for my customer. Uh, can be the kickstart for uh, creating new customer value proposition rather than poorly working on uh, uh, working on the straight away the value proposition can be a little bit redundant uh, as Bharat said we are a company of, uh, who works for alter who works as alternatives to many problems rather than providing answers thank you Samir for asking uh, a, an interesting question and hope uh, we answered that thank you thank you very much Bharat. thank you yeah, if, really not, if, not, the session. if not if not uh, our book is the right bet for you to receive a copy of it and go through it and we can actually uh, how do i work. how do i get it Bharat uh, and ram uh, is there any way i can uh, pursue it is it available on amazon or something it's, as of as of now you can just you can uh, uh, type the website address uh, you can go there and raise a request somebody will reach out and send the book across okay okay and uh, just one more point uh, Bharat, before uh, we uh, close uh, you mentioned something about the research you're working on right now about the uh, was it delivery based outcome is it no no it's called outcome driven uh, innovation odi odi okay yeah. okay all right uh, 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 is the book uh, having some information about it or are you uh, guys it's still yeah, under the kitchen you guys are still working on it no no odi is an old framework that was created by clayton christian 30 years back it's an it's an recognized okay. global framework okay um, but the, but okay. the underlying point that i want you to consider is before defining anything go out and talk to possible prospects and do a market research if you need to spend money please spend money there because we as indian companies we don't spend money on market research i would recommend you to go ahead and talk to your prospective customers get data then you can find identify patterns uh, which can be clubbed together to create a value proposition which can solve a lot of interesting problems to your customers Okay. Okay. All right. Clear. I, thank you very much, Bharat. Again, thank you, Ram. Yeah. Thank you, Shaikh. Thank you. Thank you, Samir. Uh, one more question. Uh, you talk about the life cycle about this uh, technology, and then you gave a right example of AI as a fourth generation. Okay. So, uh, one one interesting thing what I observe is about the blockchain. So, what happened that uh, the, the trend? So, it took up very in a a very high note okay in i think in 2013 for 16 i think i remember okay then what happened you spend everybody is talking about the blockchain use cases the tech there is no problem with the technology it's an adoption is an issue yeah but what happened to that just to, from a technology background from your side okay i firstly i'm not an expert in blockchain but whatever little info that i have um, the only utility that we were able to see from blockchain was cryptocurrency okay. and uh, cryptocurrency had all the bad faith in the last couple of years and the last uh, nail of FTX being banned, uh, the FTX scam that went out has gone down. Now still people are using, uh, they, they're typically using uh, blockchain for uh, cryptocurrency mining to the best of my understanding there are countries who tried adopting a blockchain for land records countries who tried adopting blockchain for a couple of other things uh, but as you said as you said uh, they, they 
people were not able to adopt. And probably I can give you a much interesting example that I heard from ISRO, um, even where we debated to them. We all access Google Maps, okay? And Google Maps has only one layer of data or probably two, three layers of information, traffic data and some buildings information. But NRSC's ISRO's combined work of Bhuvan, it has more than 175 different layers of data. This huge amount of data and probably you can do different kinds of analysis on that, but this is not accessible. Accessibility has been the biggest question. If people are able to adopt, it can fly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, can I add uh, something to that? Please. I have my own reservation for that, but I, I, I would like to hear from Ram. Can I add something to that, uh, Abdulji? Yes. Go ahead. Ram, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, usually the visibility of technology always always been associated with the invisibility of its outcomes with blockchain the invisibility of the technology was so huge that the outcomes you you can understand it so i think that was one of the serious difficulties that went on uh, so i think that's the invisibility across the spaces of its utilization adaptation and uh, uh, and uh, and going around uh, as I, as I said, uh, the fancy technology, I think uh, it, it bought in its own nails to on its own coffin. Mm, I think that's that's exactly. See, uh, one one uh, conflicting observation from my, at least for, my, for me, is so we here we talk about the shared databases. So you have your own uh, part of it, okay? And then distributed databases, okay? And then now uh, we are going into a cloud okay now so again so your uh, distributed database instead of keeping it with you you are keeping it into the cloud so you have to depend somebody to support you okay i think there is some kind of mismatch and also scalability the technology adoption all those things together you know uh, yeah, yeah. even though it's a technology is maybe it, it may come up come back again in in, in due course after some time uh, with a little, little uh, simplified version of the blockchain technology later but at this moment you know you it did not go uh, to the maturity level and then it it flattened at a, at, a, at a particular point that's what that is my observation Ram. yeah mm -hmm. thank you perfect Okay, thank you, uh, Bharat. Thank you, Ram. Very insightful. I know uh, you guys want to communicate and you want to stick to that. I know. Okay, so so it's fantastic. Uh, I always uh, admire uh, uh, very crisp, uh, very uh, very uh, very crisp and uh, 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 the way of presenting things. Uh, thank you very much for joining, and thank you, Ram, uh, for joining. If you you should have shared your uh, details before to publish into our uh, marketing content. So thank you for uh, joining the session. I, on behalf of the team, presenters, uh, the participants, and so um, I wish you all the best and uh, good luck, okay, for your business. And if there is something, we always invite you. Okay, so thank you very much for your time and efforts and fantastic insights.